Hi, welcome to another video. This is a very special video. I want all of you to watch this from start to finish. We will have a very good overview of what happened in last two years or so. Okay. So if especially if you have an automation agency or if you're if you're in the field of automating things, this will come really handy. This will give you the clarity you need to continue the journey successfully. Welcome to Techie Talks AI. I am Sri from Shogani. On this channel, we bring you hands-on demonstrations and insights into the latest tools and trends to help you get started with ease. Don't forget to subscribe and be a part of our journey into the future of technology. So when ChatGPT offered their APIs, we could directly communicate to LLMs and get the response and do all the circus that we needed to do to present the information as applicable to the user. We all have used this. Next thing that happened was RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. A large language model is actually trained or pre-trained using huge amounts of data by spending millions of dollars. In, in order for such a large language model to work for us, we needed to ensure that the large language model responds knowing our context, whether we have parking space in our company or what are the working hours about our company. So our business, our services, our know-how, also we wanted a large language model to handle as the context. So, so what we did was we added a database and the user query used to access the database and pick relevant chunks or the context and then communicate it with the large language model. So the large language model used to respond in a more context aware way. So that was the second phase. Next thing that happened was the large language model started to offer function calling. So many people did not know what function calling was at that time. Even now they don't really know because many tools and agents started doing this in an implicit way. So function calling is a way of instructing the LLM that if you cannot handle this request, you can use some extra tools which I have and I inform the LLM, the tools that I have and the parameters those tools need. So when LLM responds, it will give the function name and the parameters properly formatted. For example, if this function is a booking system and if the, so if LLM is aware of the user's name and the booking date, time, etc., LLM can properly format the request to suit the tool and then we could call the tool and get the response and maybe pass the response back to the LLM as the context and then finally LLM communicated to us. So this also needed extra handling from our side. Then came an extension. So in the same way we could add several tools to handle the request properly. Attaching tools and making the LLM queries aware of those tools became a standard practice. Then came agents. So agent completely simplified the process. So all we needed to do was to attach all the tools and maybe RAG database, other parameters like how many times you should retry, etc. And agent will handle everything for us. So our code became much more tidier and reliable in that sense. Okay, then and last number, another big thing happened where Anthropic released the model context protocol. So here, instead of attaching tools directly to the agent, we could use a protocol so that any tool created by any third party could be easily attached without us knowing the intricacies. So that made tools even more popular. So far is clear. So this is the evolution that happened. But there is a big problem in here. I have faced this in several cases where when you connect an agent to an LLM and attach tools, whether directly or via an MCP, we cannot guarantee that the agent will call the tool or we cannot guarantee that the LLM will instruct the agent with the tool calling. The reason is you can only attach tools to the agent. Rest is all magic. It is the LLM that will decide for the, such a query whether there is a need to call a tool or not. Is that clear? So there is no 100% guarantee that a specific tool will be called. For instance, if this is a calculator tool and if we are telling the agent, please do this calculation, 
there can be situations where agent will do the calculation instead of calling the external tool. So that ability to control when to definitely use a tool and when not to use a tool and which tool to use, this control was not there with agents. And the situation will become worse when you have a team of agents connected to different tools. Okay, and then came Langgraph. Many of us don't know what it is, the power it offers. So there are several videos on it, but I just wanted to summarize and highlight the significance of Langgraph. Langgraph, you can control the flow of execution. You can have an agentic flow, you can have a non-agentic flow, you can control the flow of execution within your application. And this is not a no-code solution or drag and drop solution. This is using simple Python code itself. I will show you the code. So these are some of the examples that I have pasted. I have tried these things. So second video onwards, we will have practical exercises highlighting each of those scenarios. So what is the advantage? Advantage is, supposing you have an AI assistant, and certain cases you want it to definitely use the tool attached, you can adjust the parameters in such a way that it calls the tool. So this is a graph-based orchestration for agent workflows. Nodes represent tasks. That there is memory checkpoint, decision logic, built-in debugging, and human-in-the-loop support. Okay, so here is another picture. We have a start. Then we have a path that can take you to the tools. And we can also iterate here till we are happy with the processing or till the processing is complete before we end the application. And here is a tiny example of how simple it is. So here you start the builder object. Then you attach nodes, say assistant node and tool nodes. So here we have an assistant node attached and a tool node attached. Okay, so this is the assistant node and this is the tool node. Okay, and then you add edge. So what are these edges? So here is an edge and here we have a conditional edge. So the start edge goes to assistant. See, start edge goes to assistant. So here we are adding a conditional edge, tools condition. Here we are adding another edge, tools to assistant. And then we are compiling the entire flow. Okay, that is called the React graph compilation. That is it. Just adding few lines, you will get a flow like this. So this is a simple example to highlight how easy it is to get started. Now let's see how, why this is important. Th these uh, slides are from Landgraph presentation itself. When we have a router-based flow, it is rigid. You have less flexibility. That is, it will always follow the same path. So LLM will not have any control over picking a specific route. And if we deploy fully autonomous agents, you have no guarantee that the LLM will pick the right path. So ideally, you need a balance between the two, where we and the LLM will share the control. So there is another picture again from Landgraf presentation. So this is about agents level of control, higher, lower. If it is an autonomous agent, agent will have complete control, right? And if it is a, a router-based flow, agent will not have much control. Just see this one, the reliability factor. Application reliability is higher when it follows a predictable path. Are you getting what I'm trying to convey? So here, this is what Landgraph offers or the advantages of Landgraph. It offers autonomous agent with higher control or higher predictability. It has its own persistence. It can have streaming connection and human in the loop is possible. And 
controllability. You can control the flow. You can add conditional control flows. And this is what land graph offers. Okay, so, so this is a quick introduction of where land graph fits in the scenario of LLM tools, agents, MCP connected tools, and then finally land graph based agentic system. And there is another tool called uh, LandSmith that gives us complete observability. You can see the execution flow. So that is it for this video. Uh, next video, we'll begin our uh, practical demonstrations journey. So thank you for your time. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Bye-bye.